Good afternoon to everybody, and I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting us here, Sermogran and the Corporation of Granadilla that we belong to, to take part in this international conference. I think it's an excellent idea because we've got two days to discuss very interesting issues in order to improve waste management on the island. I came here to give you the view, the municipal standpoint for those of us who take responsibility for collecting transport to the environmental complex for treatment. We're the ones very of, who very often have to get the short end of the stick on the deal because it's very costly, it's a very complex job to implement sorting if you don't have awareness amongst the, at a grassroots level. So we're a public company. It's 100% owned by the local corporation. We have seven municipal services, one of which is to collect household solid waste. Before we get into my presentation, I'd like to address the dichotomy of the concept of a public, publicly owned company because it seems to be somewhat contradictory. As a company, we're a private manager, but as public, we have to do it from a municipal standpoint. But we combine both these aspects. This is a company with an objective to maximize the revenues and minimize costs, which in this case is waste management in the municipality. And also the fact that we are public is important for us because it entails that we have a duty to the people of Granada and Abona. We have to provide a top quality service. We, have, we don't have to generate profits, but if we do, we have to reinvest them in our business. For those of you who don't know, Grenadilla de Bona is in the south of the island, for those who come from outside the island. About, it's about 50, it has a population of about 50,000. It's strategically important as part of the island economy. The reason that we're here today is this figure here, 37.38%. This is the increase in sorting of packaging that we've achieved from between 2014 and 2015. In 2014, we recovered 260.65 tonnes of packaging, which is about 4.7 kilos per inhabitant a year. Then after applying a series of incentives and measures for the local population, we now collected 344 kilos, a tonne, sorry, in 2015 which is about 7.9 kilos per head per year, which is a major increase, it's an exponential increase. According to the latest data from ECOEMBE, we've moved up the rankings in the Canarias from number 34 by the number of kilos per inhabitant up to number 20. So when we're now the fourth best with 7.9 kilos per inhabitant, as I said. The program Granadilla Reciclo or Granadilla Recycles offers incentives. We're promoting so we're promoting sorting, which in turn has been awarded a, a prize for the best awareness campaign of the public administration in 2015. The reason for this, because we've moved from one context in 2014 or 2013, in December 2013, we decided to sort light packaging. This was something that the local corporation that decided to sort an additional fraction of the waste. We did this blind. In fact, at one moment, we really didn't know how to bill ECOEMBES for, the collect, for their collection services. The same as many municipalities, what we do 
who manage the 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 fraction and sorted fractions were all in hands of other agency and it seemed to be a separate problem from conventional waste collection that had to be done by the local council after in, in implementing sorting we did this in the municipality and like many other municipalities from talks we've had with other people in this area at the time we didn't really have an active sorting policy when we talk about an active policy or what i mean is involvement getting the people involved in it a, a policy that will mobilize the population and all the different groups within the municipality to date what we've done is to organize some communication actions very simple stuff but they weren't very pragmatic it's a question of getting down to the depth the heart of the problem i how to increase the the sorting rates all in one, we move from that. One of the problems that we felt, what, 16,000 tons a year are continued to be dumped in the all in one container, which is about 94% of all the waste that was generated in the municipality. So the 2014 data when we took over the sorting packagings, the sorting that was done of glass, paper and carton was about 6% of all the waste that was being generated in Granadilla. As you can see, this is a long way from hitting the targets established for 2020, the Contaminated Soil and Waste Act. As we will see now, The, we'll see there's both a public and a private side, a business side to this. On the business side, our approach, if I can make the remote work, we made a financial analysis of general collection of waste in the, the local area. The first analysis is a cost analysis. The local councils pays about 770,000 euros for dumping the 16 tons of rubbish in the landfill, which means that about 2,100 euros is what we pay to tip the rubbish in the landfills. And this is resources and material that might, we might be able to harness for recycling. And as you'll see now, for also generating new revenues that will enable us to roll out active policies. Of this 2,000 euros a day, that we're paying for characterizing for for characterizing the waste we estimate that about 15 percent of this could be packaging that are thrown into the all-in-one container so we're talking about of this 2000 uh euros is about 300 and something euros a day that we're throwing away that we could recover if you multiply this by 336 days a year we've been throwing away over 115,000 euros a year into the landfill that we're burying. This is an asset that we have, and in turn, we're paying 40 euros a tonne to have this buried. So the economic effect on the municipality is tiny, as you can see, as you can imagine. When we rolled out sorting for light packaging, we immediately realized that this was a major source of revenues because Echo Embis pays us within the established way. According to the agreement we have with the Canary Island government, they, they pay for the collection and the transport from the yellow bin to the environmental plants. And we found that within this business approach, we saw that collecting this light packaging is a potential source of revenues that for the public side of our business can generate financial and social benefits, which was well we'll look at now. So having reached this conclusion, we had to prepare a simple strategy. The aim of the strategy is to increase or en enhance our infrastructure with containers we started with 165 containers we now have around 258 on the street so about 60 percent of these are out there but here 
this is where we've worked very hard, and I think we've done a fairly decent job if we look at the results that we're starting to see. Motivation. We don't like using the words or the term environmental awareness because it's, it seems to be very superficial. What we want to do is we talk about motivating, about working with people. We, t we talk about in this voluntary process, as, as Juan just said, in which people in the end choose what to do with their waste. So what we have to do is to motivate these people. So if somebody's got a beer can in his hand, we'll decide to throw it into the yellow bin rather than in the general bin. So we started with awareness uh, campaign linked to the environment and we found that campaigns like this didn't have much of an impact. So we sat down and rethought it and we started talking about motivation. What can we do to get a person to travel a longer distance rather than the all-in-one container he has on the doorstep so that it will throw out the sorted packaging. So we started working on this to motivate people. This is a global motivation process. As I said before, we changed things around totally. We saw that all the awareness campaigns in the past talk about the environment. But what we've identified in our target population, that this is a concept that's far too general to abstract for people. If we do a quick poll here and ask how many of us are in favor of preserving the environment, we can do it if you want. So raise your hands, and I'm sure everybody would raise their hands. But the qu if we ask somebody in where I live, for instance, what would you be willing to do? As I said before, would you be willing to travel 500 meters in order to throw away your, your beer can in the yellow bin because it's not just on your doorstep? In order to preserve the environment, then what we found that this t people weren't that motivated in f recycling. So we focused on explaining to people how much management costs. People haven't a clue anywhere about how much it costs to manage waste. Waste management, which is divided in two parts, first of all, you've got the management itself, transport, paying wages, fuel, and things like that. And then on the other side, we've got the concept that we said before about paying a duty. They have no idea why they pay their rubbish tax. In Grenadilla, we're talking about 80 euros a year that they pay for rubbish collection. Divide that by 365 days, you're talking about 19 cents a day. So for 19 cents a day, a flat rate, you can do whatever you want. But people didn't really understand that waste management and throwing away a resource such as a beer can or some other kind of packaging, throwing it into the all-in-one container costs the municipality it, in terms of the local taxes they pay. But in turn, if that can go somewhere else, if it's put it into the right, uh, the yellow bin in this case, it becomes an economic resource for the municipality. And that is the change of discourse that we've presented to our local population in Granadilla. In turn, in order to motivate them, we're also involving them. We have an involvement process. First of all, the, corporate, the local corporation itself that has opted to do this, they've really decided it. The board of Semergran anything crazy idea that we experts had for driving sorting for packaging got the full support from the board even our staff in the company that you have to work with so that when they see a can thrown into the ground then the cleaning staff will come along and pick it up they'll put it in the right place rather than just throw it into the single bin then there's the the major job that we're doing with different groups of school, children, bars and restaurants and the general population. 
it's almost a guerrilla war with it on this. We're permanently in the streets. We've visited all the bars and restaurants in Granadilla de Abona. We've told them why we need to recycle. We've told them how much it costs if we don't recycle and how we're throwing money away and how stupid it is to throw money away like that when we could be generating revenues that could become positive things for the people in the municipality. We're doing a lot of very simple communication. It's very cheap as well. And as I said before, all of it is aimed at sorting this packaging. We're not organizing any major promotional campaigns or spending vast sums of money on communication projects that are all too general and too abstract and doesn't even measure the impact. What we're doing is working with schools, with the bars and restaurants. We work in the area of education and in sports. We also work in many other areas. I'll give you two examples of this in a minute, which are quite representative of what we're doing in the municipality. But first and foremost, what we the change that we've given to our discourse in order to motivate people is the demonstration effect of recycling. As I said before, recycling involves reducing the expenses for the council. We always give the same example. Every ton of packaging that I've in hand, if I put it in the all-in-one tin, costs me 40 euros or almost 40 euros, multiplied, as I said before, by the, 17, the 16 tons that we have a year. If that same ton I sort and put in the yellow bin, it generates revenues that can vary the, the formula according to the almost unintelligible formula of the framework agreement. And these revenues are drawing environmental investment into the area. And this is what we're explaining to everybody who lives in Granadilla. Every ton that we recycle means we have less municipal expenses and more revenues. And these revenues is green investment that becomes direct investment for the municipality. In fact, the funds that we get from Coimbes, we're making direct investments that is enable us to improve our services without hiking taxes. For instance, with the money that, that we get from Ecoembes, we're investing this in buying two electric vans, which in turn enable us to reduce our fuel costs and, of course, where the emissions are much lower. We're also investing in resources to improve our services. We just bought a, a van, for instance, to, uh, with a hose to improve our street cleaning. We're creating infrastructures, for instance. We have a small car park around the town centre which has been paid for from the money we saved from the packaging and we're telling people this. So what we're telling them is that every effort they will make to recycle ends up as positive things like this. It's also direct investment by the company to improve its services but another strand of our strategy which gives us enormous satisfaction is our investment in social and cultural development programs in the municipality. We found this quite surprising because we were, we were brainstorming of this as very simple things, but they've galvanized the entire community. And just to, uh, to round off, we've got two examples here. There's a competition which is called Give Us the Tin, which in Spanish means, um, uh, don't leave me alone, bother me all the time. And this is a competition to all the, this is a competition between the 18 schools that we have in the municipality to see who can recycle the most throughout the academic year. There's a classification here, and we have a whole series of prizes that we hand out. So this project, for instance, that we thought up as a way of collecting all the packaging there in schools has really become a galvanizing action for the community. Parents, grandparents, everybody's got children, people who don't have children, the bars and restaurants around the schools are keeping them so the kids can take them to the school so that they can win their prize. For us, this meant that we've, in schools, we've collected 3,900 containers 
800 litre containers full of light packaging and a lot of these would probably have been dumped in the all-in-one container. It's 7,826 kids have taken part in this and we've given out over 14,000 euros in prizes. The second project that we are considering, although we're working, is the solidarity packaging project. So for every tonne that we recycle or recover from the yellow bins and is taken down to the sorting plants, 50 euros are spent on social projects of all kinds. And what we do is we choose these projects from associations within the The 316 uh, tons that we collected last year became 17,018 euros. We've opened another call for bids. And in the end, what we've done with all of this, as I, going back to the start of this presentation, it means that we have to think from the business point of view of maximizing our revenues by recycling, minimizing our costs, I reduce the costs that we have to pay for at the landfill, because all of this comes from local taxes, and plow all this money back into different aspects of the municipal with direct investments or projects like this one. This Danos La Lata is a project for collecting these tins. The only requirement for projects of this kind is that the money that we give out as prizes for recycling has to be invested, has to be spent in the local shops and businesses. So we're creating a consent incentive for consuming homegrown goods. And just to wrap up, because I think I've overrun my 10 minutes. Yeah, I think I probably have. And I really didn't want to talk very much today. So conclusions, find something to motivate people. If we think if you find the right driver and if you can involve the people, but above all, if you get a drive from local entity, either people who are finally responsible for sorting Sorting is not the responsibility of the companies that have got the concessions. It's our responsibility because the more sorting that we do of our waste, less money it will cost us to feed it into the landfill. These are three vital aspects for fostering sorting and to reach the ratios that we saw before about 37.38%. And in 2016, it con it's continuing to grow at the same rate. Thank you very much. And I would apologize for overrunning my time.